Hi again, here we are talking about JavaScript, and I'm going to continue um, with the shopping cart example. So here we are, we've got the shopping cart, you know, we've written a lot of code, and we have this, you know, mostly functioning in the browser here. You know, I can refresh this in my cart. You know, I can add and subtract items from the from the shopping cart, and you know, add them to the cart, and delete them from the cart, and it you know, it gives me the total number of items and the total cost of the cart. You know, the count and the price per item and the total price for all the items, right? So that, that's working pretty good. Um, I have big plans for this. We're going to do more with it later. But uh, so far, um, this is working pretty good. If we look at the code here, we've got this code in a script tag inside of our HTML document. And while that works fine in this in this context here, you know, in the future, we might want to make this this code more portable where we can take it and, you know, use it in any project or maybe, maybe you know, this site um, might be broken down into a couple different HTML pages. You know, we might have one page where, you know, it shows products in, you know, in a group where you see maybe a grid or a list of products and we want to be able to add the cart there and display the current cart in that page and then we have another different HTML document with um, a detail view of a single product or like another page that shows specials right with just a few products or products in a certain group and on that page we also want to share the cart so what we don't want to do is we don't want to copy and paste all of the cart code right into each of those HTML documents that's asking for trouble, right? You know, if you make a change in one document, then the cart might act funny, you know, between pages, and we don't know why, because, you know, and then we end up comparing or trying to compare long lists of code to see if it's exactly the same, and it, you know, we shouldn't have duplicate code, right? So, um, you know, that that's a, a, um, a software kind of term, dry, you know, don't, repeat yourself okay right so so this is a good idea right it, it saves us trouble it um, you know makes our job easier it prevents error okay so how do we move this code into a place where we can share it across multiple documents or reuse it in different projects okay um, well <clears throat> what we can do is we can create a, a JavaScript document and then you know move the code into that document and import that document into any document that might want to use the JavaScript code for the shopping cart now we have to look at our code carefully because we have two kinds of code here okay some of the code is code that belongs to the page because it's specific to elements in the page okay so in other words you know um, this page has these elements here that have IDs and class names okay and so code that refers to those ID and class names is you know kind of required to be in this page I mean we can move it into its own document but if, it, if we import it into another document that doesn't have these ID and class names then you know it doesn't work right the second thing we have to worry about is this code uses jQuery right and jQuery is you know another library of code and so if we load up the code here <coughs> and um, and jQuery is not available then all of the code here fails okay so that's called a dependency so you know anytime you have code that depends on another library then you know we have a dependency and we have to make sure that you know the the first library or the dependent library is loaded first right so so we'll have to keep that in mind so let's take a quick look at the code that we have here okay so uh, we have you know this block at the top that has you know add to cart clear cart you know um, display cart I want to change this display cart we're gonna come back to that right and then you know in display cart you can see it you know it, it calls on some things by their ID name right and then we have these functions here that um, you know show cart and you know and uh, you know or actually I should say you know this is for the plus and the minus button and the delete item and item count field right so all that stuff pretty much has to stay in this page okay 
and it depends on jQuery, so we can't use this unless jQuery is loaded. Okay. Now we're going to look down here at the shopping cart. So everything below this comment that I have, the shopping cart, you know, object, the shopping cart, you know, um, properties that we've added and these methods that we've added to shopping cart, all of this is kind of self-contained, right? So, so this is the code that runs the cart, and we can import this into every page, okay? Right? And then I have some extra things down here, this console log and some of these other notes, but we don't really need those, right? So uh, there we go, right? Um, and this display cart also can stay in this page because it is, um, it's, um, you know, it's kind of calls that function that we're going to leave here. So why don't we do that? So everything from here up to the comment that we had, let me go find it, right? So I'm going to select all this everything up until right here okay so all of that we're going to move it into another document okay so let me make let me cut command x right so we're going to cut that okay save all this and then we'll make a brand new document and paste okay and then we'll save and we're going to put this in, in the folder here for the shopping cart tutorial. And we're going to call it, um, how about shopping cart.js. How about that? I think that's okay, right? Maybe that's a good name. So we'll, we'll save that, shopping cart.js. And then I'll put it in my folder here. And now um, I want to look at this code here, and I want to format it nicely. So, I, you know, I have all these extra tabs here, and that looks a little weird. You know, I like everything tabbed very nicely. So I'll select, I'll just do a select all, and in brackets, and I'll, this, this applies to Coda and Sublime and a lot of other text editor, editors. If you do command and the square bracket, like the left bracket, then it'll move everything to the left. And if you use the right bracket, it pushes it to the right. Okay, so I'm going to do that until everything is flush here. But, you know, inside my functions, I still have that tab, right? So, you know, here I can see the function begins, and then this code that's tabbed is in the function, right? So I just want to make this look nice. Don't get sloppy here, right? Um, <clears throat> it'll come back and haunt you, and you'll have a hard time reading your code, right? Okay, so there we go, right? I've got all my shopping cart code, okay? And uh, we'll save this. And now when I go to the, um, to the file that we're working on here, where the shopping cart code is, we'll need to import the shopping cart JS, okay? Before, somewhere before we call display cart, because that, um, no, actually, yeah, I guess display cart, because we're going to call on that, and it's going to call on the um, shopping cart list cart method, right? So we don't want to call on this until after we've loaded the shopping cart JS. So it's got to go somewhere higher up on the page, okay? Also, the shopping cart, you know, all this stuff down here depends on jQuery, so jQuery has to be loaded before all of this, and we've already got that figured out. So, you know, jQuery is loaded at the top of the page here, so that's already fixed, right? So now down here, this is where my script begins. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another script tag and type source equals, and then I'll um, name my file. Okay, and my file is called shoppingcart.js, so I'll, I'll type the name in here. Okay, so note that you, if you use the source tag inside the script tag, you can't put JavaScript inside the, the script tag. Okay, so you can't add extra JavaScript here. It won't work. I mean, you can type it in there, it just won't do anything. Okay, and there we go. So now that we've got this loading first, and then our other script down here, everything should be good. Let's give it a test. So I'll, I'll clear and I'll refresh. You know, hard to tell if it's working or not. I guess we could click the buttons. What do we do? Console. First thing, every time we're doing something and we want to make sure that things are working, we have the console open and we check for an error, okay? Looks like there's no errors, so now we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll test some things here. It looks like the, 
the frisbees and the bananas are still working and we can delete the items and subtract or add items and everything's good and we're getting the total and the count Okay, well, thanks for watching, and I hope that's helpful to you. Um, one, one more note, you know, I didn't mention this. I kind of assumed that people will get this, but I'm going to point it out, I think. Um, you'll see here that in my code, I'm calling on the file name Shopping Cart JS, and I've, I've got the Shopping Cart here in my folder, and this, this is the HTML file, and they're in the same folder together, so I don't need to put prefix anything in front of this. I don't need to include any folder names. I just need the file name. If I were to create a folder, let's say called JS, maybe for my JavaScript, then and I was to put this inside the folder, then I would need to use the folder name here inside the, the source attribute like this, JS slash, you know, and the file name. Okay, so here's the folder that contains, you know, this file right here, okay? So if I do that, then it, then this will function also without that, then it would not find this file and we'd have a like a 404 error or whatever the error message is, right? Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching and I hope that all makes sense and uh, there we go.